Greenville University is a liberal arts university in Greenville, Illinois. It is affiliated with the Free Methodist Church, a church with an evangelical foundation. Greenville College was renamed Greenville University on June 1, 2017. Topic: History. In 1855, Stephen Morse and Almira Blanchard founded a college for women, Almira College. Almira College shared an affiliation with the Baptist Church and educated young women until a change in leadership, affiliation and organization in 1892. At that time, the Central Illinois Conference of the Free Methodist Church purchased the property of Almira College. The institution was restructured to offer a coeducational experience for both genders. The institution was also incorporated as an independent university under the leadership of the Free Methodist Church. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Code of Conduct. Students attending Greenville University are expected to adhere to a lifestyle that is codified and asks that the student agree to certain principles that the school calls, "...Christ honoring", outlined in a document known as the Lifestyle Statement, which all students must sign in order to attend the college. Violations of the lifestyle statement are handled through a grace-based system which seeks to help students recover from any negative effects i.e. addiction, emotional distress and rehabilitate them to live according to Christ's purpose for their life. The lifestyle statement exists to keep the GU community accountable for having a healthy lifestyle that keeps the individual in line with God's redemptive plan. It includes instructions for all students to avoid backbiting, cheating, dishonesty, drunkenness, gossip, a modesty of dress, lying, occult practices, profanity, sexual promiscuity including adultery, homosexual behavior, premarital sex, theft, and vulgarity including crude language. Other actions that students must agree to refrain from, both while on and away from campus, include the use of tobacco in any form, alcoholic beverages, hallucinogenic drugs and substances including marijuana, or narcotics not authorized by a physician, gambling, and using or possessing pornography. And, in keeping with the institution's focus on Christian principles, the document states Members of the community are to observe the Lord's Day Sunday as a day set apart primarily for worship, fellowship, ministry, and rest. These principles are set in place to hold students accountable for creating a learning environment that stands out from other universities and offers unique benefits to the health and well-being of the student. Greenville University understands that no student is perfect and is committed to providing support without judgment to anyone suffering from any kind of problem, addiction, or mental illness. Struggling students are often encouraged to receive counseling or meet with a mentor in order to provide professional support as they attempt to make lifestyle changes. Students are not required to sign a statement of faith, however, they must fulfill at least 36 chapel credits each semester. Most of these credits are fulfilled by attending a chapel service that is available on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of every academic week at 9.30 a.m. Campus Nearly 800 students live on campus in a variety of residence halls including Joy Hall, Janssen Hall, Burrett Hall, Holtwick Hall, Blakenship Apartments, Tenney Hall, Kinney Hall, and Ellen J. Manoya Hall formerly known as College Avenue Hall. An additional 101-bed dormitory, called West Oak Hall, opened fall of 2007. Students also live in a number of college-owned houses. In the summer of 2007, Janssen Hall originally constructed in 1959 was gutted and completely updated and remodeled. Joy Hall was renovated in the summer of 2011 to bring it up to modern safety code. The college is home to the only museum dedicated to the works of the sculptor Richard Bock, an associate of Frank Lloyd Wright. 
The first classes of Almira College in the 1850s were held in John Brown White's home, which is called the Almira College House and houses box sculptures. In 1999, under the leadership of President Manoya, the college became the first campus in the nation to install a completely wireless Internet network across the entire campus. Hogue Hall The previous oldest building on campus, Wilson T. Hogue Hall, originally housed Almira College. Bricks for the building were made on the front campus in 1855, and the building was erected between 1856 and 1864 and given the name, Old Main. Hogue Hall contained the data processing center and administrative offices of the college on the lower two floors. The upper two floors, originally dormitory rooms, provided offices for the faculty and a few small classrooms. Informal conversation between faculty and students frequently took place in these offices. An open bridge at the third floor level led to the third floor of Lagi Auditorium and Marston Hall, which serves as the main classroom building. This building was part of the National Register of Historic Places. In the spring of 2007, then-President Vincent James Manoya was made aware of structural problems within Hogue Hall that led to a remodeling project in the building. In the summer of 2007, remodeling work on the lower floor found significant cracks in the timber holding up the masonry wall. When it became aware of the situation, the college stopped the remodeling and consulted with a structural engineer and architectural experts on old buildings for advice. These experts' initial inspection uncovered major structural concerns in the east wing of the historic building. Classes were moved from the four classrooms on the third floor of the building, and faculty with offices located in the east wing were relocated to the classrooms. After extensive consultation with local citizens, faculty, staff, alumni, and the Board of Trustees President Manoya determined that Hogue Hall should be torn down in the summer of 2008, despite objections from Illinois State Preservation Agency. The site of Hogue Hall is now a grassy area that has been appreciated by students and faculty. While original plans were to rebuild a new Hogue Hall in the same location, the College Board of Trustees is deciding whether to rebuild it in another location. Topic Athletics Greenville University teams participate as a member of the National Collegiate Athletic Association's Division 3. The Panthers are a member of the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Men's sports include baseball, basketball, cross-country, football, golf, soccer, tennis, track and field and volleyball, while women's sports include basketball, cross-country, golf, soccer, softball, tennis, track and field and volleyball. Greenville added men's volleyball in the 2015-16 school year 2016 season. Since the SLIAC only sponsors volleyball for women, that team will compete in the Midwest Collegiate Volleyball League. Topic: Notable alumni. Topic: Faculty 1956 Prohibition Party candidate for president, Enoch A. Holtwick, was a professor of history and government at Greenville College and is honored at GU through the Enoch A. Holtwick Literary Award and Enoch A. Holtwick Hall, a residence building. GU professor Richard Houston became a Fulbright Scholar for the third time in July 2007. He spent a year lecturing at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Nicaragua in Leon, Nicaragua, beginning in February 2008. Greenville University depends heavily on full time faculty as the foundation for its educational program, particularly in the four year traditional undergraduate programs. In the spring of 2009, 69 full time faculty were employed at the school. According to the Faculty Handbook, full-time faculty are reviewed regularly. They are reviewed in their second, fourth, and sixth years of employment. For those faculty on the tenure track, the sixth year review is usually a tenure review. Post-tenure reviews occur every seven years. 
In each review, teaching and professional growth are evaluated. Faculty are also evaluated in at least one other area, scholarship, service, and or governance. Greenville University says the review process is based on its published standards and what it calls its commitment to excellence in teaching. See also Phyllis Holmes Robert Smith <laughs>